Hi there, this is Dr. Robert Sivas again. I am the Carb Addiction Doctor. And today we're going to talk about something that's very important, mostly to women, but on the back end, we're going to throw the men in there as well. This episode is going to be about polycystic ovarian syndrome, gestational diabetes, and for the boys, low T, low testosterone. Of course, everybody, because it comes down to virility and being a man or being a woman, it's a very important concept. So let's begin by understanding the biology behind these issues. The way it works is this. When you eat huge amounts of carbohydrates on a regular basis, over time, chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption triggers an insulin response because insulin causes or forces the liver to remove that excess sugar from the bloodstream and turn it to fat. That is where this comes from. This didn't come from eating too much steak. This came from carbohydrates. Remember, I used to be 300 pounds. So I've lost 90, but there's still a little residual pocket, pocket over there. So when you eat carbohydrates in excess, the dynamics of your hormones change and your body is now asking insulin to help you to force the liver to remove sugar from the bloodstream and turn it into fat. And let's just put this into perspective because I said, oh, when you're eating a ton of carbohydrates, let me put it into you, to you in perspective. If you took my body right now and you melted me down, and I'm in ketosis, if you melted me down, my blood sugar is around 70, and you extracted all of the sugar in my blood vessels, how much sugar do you think there is in my entire body right now? Let me give you some thoughts. A teaspoon, a tablespoon, a cup full, a gallon. How much sugar is there in my body to maintain my blood sugar? The truth is, it's around four to five grams, about one level teaspoon. Think about how little that is. You look at an apple, the average apple is 25 to 30 grams of carbohydrates. That's five or six times more sugar than I have in my entire bloodstream. Can of Coke is 39 to 40 grams of carbohydrates. A massive load that just gets sucked up into my bloodstream and my body has to handle it. And that's what the insulin liver system does. But over time, as I do that over and over and over again, my liver begins to say, dude, I'm getting tired. Screw you. I'm not going to respond to insulin anymore. And your blood sugar starts to rise above that insulin clamp, a little bit above normal. That's called insulin resistance, where the liver is resisting the effect of insulin. Now, we talk about the liver. Other tissues and glucagon and other things do it. But for isolationistic purposes, let's talk about the liver. So the liver becomes resistant. Now you have two types of people. Genetically, some people can produce a massive amount of insulin. So if your doctor is not measuring your insulin and trying to treat you, how the hell can they treat you without knowing what the problem is? They have to, or they certainly should, seriously consider measuring insulin. It's the cornerstone of my treatment. So we measure insulin, and you find some people have a high insulin producers. They can produce this massive amount of insulin. So no matter how resistant the liver is to that insulin, the pancreas just says, screw you liver, here's more insulin. Do your darn job. And it forces, even though the liver is resistant to insulin, this massive amount of insulin uh, forces the liver to convert sugar to fat. And those people become enormous. But their blood sugars are relatively normal. So they do not get diabetes. They're obesogenic, not diabetogenic. And that's true for males and females. But here's what happens. Cholesterol becomes estrogen in females and becomes testosterone in males. There's a series of enzymatic uh, steps where the, where the body, the certain parts of the body is able to transform this molecule called cholesterol into either estrogen in a female or testosterone in a male. If you look at the molecules, they actually look very, very similar by, uh, if you draw them out. The problem is that insulin blocks the very first step of cholesterol conversion to pregnenolone. That's the first enzyme step. And if you're a high insulin producer, you severely block the production in females of estrogen and in males of testosterone. But it gets worse. Remember, these people are becoming very, very fat. <coughs> so they're enormous. Uh, they're not diabetic. But they're 
in the females, you're not able to produce uh, estrogen, which means that your progesterone is going out of control. The other factor that happens in females is you're producing that, where that blockade happens to, to cholesterol, now the pathway goes toward testosterone. So in females, you've got a reduction in estrogen, which is kind of the, think of it as the feminine hormone. And you've got an increase in progesterone and in testosterone. And those are what's called the androgenizing hormones. They make you more masculine. So you start getting the hair on your face, you start getting a male distribution of fat, you get a more gruff skin, your periods are not quite as good, your fertility goes away. Your fertility goes away. That syndrome complex is called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Why? Because those same women develop these big cysts in their ovaries of eggs that can't burst under the estrogen progesterone cycling response that is a period. So they develop all these cysts in their, in their ovaries, but it's directly related to chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption in a high insulin producer. And it is measurable if you measure it. And then what they do, how do they treat PCOS? Well, your gynecologist will very often put you on metformin. Metformin is a diabetic drug. We use it in diabetics to increase insulin sensitivity. That's why we use it. So that's further proof of this pathway. So these women get PCOS and they find it very difficult to conceive. The commonest cause of infertility in the United States right now is PCOS. And yes, there's a variety of fertility specialists that can help. Once those women get pregnant, they can typically hold that pregnancy pretty well. So the loss with PCOS patients is not significantly elevated. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. But PCOS androgenizes you. And what happens to those women is a lot of the fat that they get because of that androgenic pathway is what's called visceral fat. So instead of getting the nice fluffy fat under your skin that defines the female shape, the estrogen-based female shape, what happens is they develop the male shape. You know, males typically, the high testosterone males have this big belly and the fat is not between the skin and the muscle, it's on the inside around the organs, around the liver, around the heart. And people say, oh, it's that fat around the heart that's killing you. No, it's not. It's not visceral fat that kills you. It's the pathway by which you collect visceral fat that does. It's the, the chemical pathophysiology that causes that in your body. So that's another important thing. All because we see the observation, you've got to go back and look at the biologic process. But that's for another talk another day. The key thing to understand is that in women, it's a decrease in estrogen uh, production and an increase thereby in testosterone and progesterone function or, or production that causes androgenization and causes PCOS. In males, those same males, it's exactly the opposite. The opposite occurs. Males normally produce a lot of testosterone. That's the normal function. Adrenal and kidney testosterone production. But when you convert, uh, when you block cholesterol conversion to testosterone, and remember those males are gathering a lot of fat, so they've got this enormous amount of fat. So not only have they got very, very low testosterone production, and it can be extremely low, the second thing that happens because of all this fluffy fat on the, out, on the outside between the muscle and the skin, and they kind of look like the Michelin man, there is a concept called the peripheral conversion of DHEA to estrogen. So we are actually Fluffy males, males that are high insulin producers, actually produce estrogen in this fat that we have between our skin and our muscles. So not only do we have the low testosterone, we have the feminization of estrogen. So those fluffy males tend to take on a feminine hormonal background. And hopefully that helps you to clarify that it's not just the low testosterone, it's the increase in estrogen production that's important. Now, one of the cool things is this. When you stop eating carbohydrates, when you go on an ultra-low carbohydrate, ketogen well-formulated ketogenic diet or a low-carb, high-fat diet, what happens is you restore normal. You restore normal. I have one patient, a number of patients, but I have one particular patient who in the, in the period of one year took his testosterone from 34 to 107, 
We measured it. And the only thing it did was to stop eating carbohydrates. Pretty impressive, don't you think? So you can cure low T. At the same time, the commonest complication in my fertile females, in my practice, in my office, 12% of my fertile females get pregnant in the first year after they start a ketogenic diet. Ketogenic diet doesn't cause pregnancy, but they're looking better, they're feeling better, and they're much, much more fertile. Their fertility goes through the roof. So they either walk past a sperm that's lying itinerantly on the sidewalk, or they sit on a warm toilet seat, and they get pregnant. Of course, these women, these young girls, never ever have sex. No, 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 I didn't have sex, but you're pregnant. Uh, 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 if you're going to go on a low-carbohydrate, uh, um, high-fat diet, and you are at risk of getting pregnant, and you don't want to be, put yourself on some damn birth control. Because you don't have to have sex, clearly, by all the, all the girls that come into my office and tell me, oh, I didn't have sex, but your pregnancy test positive. Clearly, the science says you don't have to have sex if you're on a low-carb, high-fat diet to get pregnant. Now, I'm kidding. Of course, there was insertion. But your fertility rate goes through the roof. And for all those women with PCOS, seeing fertility doctors, and really traumatized and struggling to get fat, uh, str struggling to get pregnant, cut out your carbohydrate consumption, restore your insulin sensitivity with or without metformin, and the likelihood of pregnancy will go through the roof. Same thing with guys with low T. Now, let me flip this around briefly. Because when you eat chronic excessive carbohydrates, some people can't produce a lot of, a lot of carbohydrates. Those are called, the, sorry, they cannot produce a lot of insulin. Those are the low, carbo, low insulin producers. And therefore, when they're eating all those carbohydrates and their liver becomes resistant to their insulin and they can't produce more insulin, now they can't convert that sugar to fat. So the sugar builds up in their bloodstream. And then those women, actually they get, they get pregnant pretty readily because remember their insulin production is fairly low even though they're eating a lot of carbohydrates. So they usually, your, your diabetic woman can get pregnant fairly easily. But the problem then is a lot of women, especially when it happens early in the pregnancy, start eating more and more carbohydrates and there's certain biochemical reasons why it happens, but they develop gestational diabetes. So the blood sugar builds up and it stays up and eventually it starts damaging red blood cells and other cells, including the fetus, including the fetus. So the fetus doesn't get enough fat, it gets too much sugar, it swells up, just like all those other tissues, you get cardiovascular damage and vascular damage to the fetus as it, as it develops. And those women, there's a seven to eight fold increase, increase of late first and early second trimester, kind of like a third of the way to halfway through your pregnancy, loss of babies. Gestational diabetes is associated with, with fetal loss because of the elevated carbohydrates in the bloodstream of the mother as well as in the fetus and the absence of structural fat in their diet. So those women are much, much more prone. They get pregnant, but they're much more prone to losing their babies. And if those babies are precious, why roll the dice on a six to seven, oh, sorry, on a seven to eight times increased risk of losing your baby? That's gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes cannot happen if you do not eat carbohydrates. Say it again. Gestational diabetes cannot happen if you eat if you don't eat carbohydrates. So it is not only the best thing, it is recommended by me from a scientific perspective for a pregnant woman to be on a low carbohydrate, high fat diet purely for the survival of the pregnancy. The next time we talk about pregnancy, we're going to talk about autism. A devastating disease that has increased epidemic uh, that's increased massively in the last 20 to 30 years. I'm going to explain the cause of autism and we are going to then reinforce the concept that a low carbohydrate, high fat diet is the single best diet a pregnant woman can be on. Before pregnancy for PCOS and for the males for low T, during pregnancy for the survival and the health of the pregnancy as well as the growth of the brain of that baby and afterwards for your own health if you want to grow healthy and happy as your child grows up. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that podcast. If you did, please click the subscribe button and become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. 
And if that message resonated with you and made you think, and you made a decision to do more to help yourself, but you need help, please come and see us. Set up a consultation. We can do it in person in my offices in Palm Beach Gardens at 561-627-4107 or in Jacksonville, Florida at 904-410-3934. I also do some long-distance consults telephonically or on Zoom. Set that up as well by calling 561-627-4107. We help people to manage their diabetes better and also to get started in obesity management. Or if you've had bariatric or obesity surgery and are struggling, give us a shout. We can help to